Hi guys, Olive here, here today to discuss the book Molly's Game and to compare it against its movie adaptation. First things first, let's talk about the book. Molly's Game, From Hollywood's Elite to Wall Street's Billionaire Boys Club, My High Stakes Adventure in the World of Underground Poker, is a memoir that was written by Molly Bloom. It was originally published in 2014 by It Books, which was an imprint of HarperCollins. It has since been rebranded as Day Street. The most recently issued paperback of this book comes in at 272 pages. This is the unbelievable true story of a young woman from a high-achieving family in Colorado who makes her way to LA and fairly soon afterwards finds herself running the most high stakes and exclusive underground poker game in the city. Hollywood stars and business bigwigs were all vying for a coveted spot at this table, and Molly Bloom, a petite late 20-something, was the one in control. In the book, Molly first discusses her early life, then she details how she came to find herself in Los Angeles to begin with. She talks about how she got the job that led her to the poker game. She talks about the different choices she felt she had to make in order to keep the game going and keep herself on top, until eventually everything came crashing down. Now, if you've heard anything about this story in the news, you will likely know that Molly got in trouble with the law as a result of running this game, but I don't want to go into the specifics because it's less straightforward than it seems when you look at it on the surface not knowing anything about poker. Running this poker game just itself was not strictly illegal. There are some nuances there. So the reason for her arrest is a little bit more complex, and it's talked about both in the book and in the movie. Right off the bat, let me say that the topic of Molly's legal troubles is probably one of the biggest differences between the memoir and the movie. And and that's because Molly's memoir very much leaves off with a question mark. When she wrote this book, she was still in the middle of dealing with her legal issues, and she had no idea how that was all going to turn out and what was going to happen to her. Meanwhile, in the 2017 movie adaptation, we see Molly seeking legal representation to sort this all out. In the movie, Molly, played by Jessica Chastain, approaches lawyer Charlie Jaffe, played by Idris Elba, hoping to get him to represent her. He's wary of taking her on as a client, partially because he knows she doesn't have the money to pay him, and also because he's aware of the publicity surrounding her, and this is where it gets really meta, he knows about her book. So this memoir, Molly's Game, the one I am discussing in this video and comparing against this movie adaptation, it exists within the movie. It is referenced in the movie. So all the non-flashback scenes that happen in this movie are pretty much picking up where the book left off. However, it is a semi-fictionalized account of what happened according to my research. That's not to say that Molly's stories from her memoir don't play out on the screen. They absolutely do in the form of those flashback scenes where she's telling her would-be lawyer what all happened to her to get her to this point. I wouldn't say that those flashback scenes are 100% faithful to the true story. However, I would say they're more like 70% faithful, where the general gist of things is definitely in the movie, and a lot of details from Molly's stories are in there as well. But some liberties have been taken with the story in order to make it more compelling on the screen. It was actually Aaron Sorkin, the creator of The West Wing, who adapted this for the screen. He also made his directorial debut in this movie. Since the book and the movie do tell very similar stories, I thought I would take this opportunity to discuss some of the similarities and differences in case you've read the book and would like to see the movie or vice versa to let you know what differences or similarities you can expect. Firstly, Molly Bloom was indeed a skier and continued skiing after having an initial devastating injury and then recovering from it. She got pretty far in her skiing career after that initial injury, but she never cared enough to go as far as the Olympics. So the very first scene, while it is very effective in the movie of her skiing and getting another injury, was fabricated. In the movie, Molly's father is played by Kevin Costner, and he has a very major role in the movie. We see him being a part of Molly's early life and putting a lot of pressure on her and 
and her two brothers, he really demanded greatness from them. And that put a lot of pressure on the kids. In the movie, this is kind of pointed to as Molly's motivating factor to keep pushing herself to make this game bigger, to make it more high stakes, to make sure it doesn't fail. But as became pretty clear as I was reading the book, if Molly's father is still alive, she didn't have a relationship with him at that point because he's only ever referred to in the past tense. I did a small amount of research on whether or not her father was still alive and wasn't able to find anything conclusive. I didn't want to do too much research because that's kind of invasive and I feel uncomfortable with that. But if he is indeed no longer with us, I can understand why Aaron Sorkin would write him as a character in the movie because he does play a part in Molly's life. But this represents a similarity between the book and the movie because proving her worth was always a huge motivating factor for Molly. She says outright in the memoir in a way that's not so explicitly stated in the movie that she never felt as good as her brothers. They were very high achieving. They got so much praise from her father. Meanwhile, Molly's path was a little bit rockier. She had more roadblocks than they seemed to, at least the way it's portrayed. So she always wanted to prove that she was just as good. Excluding the relationship that Molly has with her father, and I would also say her mother, in the movie, the relationships that are shown in the book that are then translated to the movie are far more complex and nuanced. I'm thinking primarily of the boss who first introduces Molly to the game and then eventually becomes an obstacle for her. He is a pretty cut and dry villain in the movie, whereas in the book, it is so much more complex than that. There are also relationships in the book that don't make the movie at all. Molly had a friend and roommate for a really long time. She was really close to this girl, even though she was hiding details of the game from her. She's not in the movie. Molly had several different romantic relationships. None of those made the movie. In fact, there's no romantic element to the movie whatsoever. And that's the opposite of what I would expect. Normally a book that has no romance gets a romance for a Hollywood movie, but it's the opposite in this case. I actually think that was the right choice on Sorkin's part. I am assuming he didn't want to distract from the core story or distract from the completely platonic relationship between Molly and her lawyer, played by Idris Elba. There is one big absence from the movie, though, that I don't think worked, and that's the fact that we don't get to see Molly living her swanky, luxurious lifestyle as a result of running these games. Sure, we see her wardrobe get a little bit nicer. We can kind of tell she's doing a little better for herself. But there's nothing about her living the high life, which is definitely in the book. That means that in the movie, her sole motivation is that desire to prove herself. Meanwhile, the desire to prove herself was one of her motivations, but another one was the money. But I would say the biggest difference between the book and the movie is that in the book, Molly is a whole lot more fallible. She understands all the different things that could go wrong at any time, and she's worried about it. The Molly on the screen is very composed, put together. She doesn't let her fear show. She has a good poker face, if you will. And that may be the way she is in person, but on the page, you can understand all the different ways that she was putting herself at risk. And I understand that the movie couldn't show all of them, but you could feel her shaking in the book. In the movie, there just probably wasn't enough time to show all the different ways that Molly was exposed to risk at any given time. There is already a really big ask of the screenplay in this movie, and that is to teach the audience about poker as you're watching these games go down. I think because the poker element was such a huge part of this story and required so much explaining to the audience, that Sorkin had to simplify Molly's feelings of risk and helplessness and translate them more as interpersonal conflict, which is a whole lot easier for an audience to understand just outright. You don't need to know anything about poker in order to understand two people having a conflict. But a natural result of that is that the Molly in the movie is a whole lot more robotic than the Molly in the book. And that is not to say that Jessica Chastain did a bad job. She actually did a terrific job. She really nailed Molly's soft spoken nature. You can compare the two in interviews and really see how good of a job she did. 
But in the movie, she doesn't feel as human because we don't feel her fear. We don't feel her pain. All of that being said, I really have to tip my hat to Aaron Sorkin for all the creative choices he made when he was adapting this story for the screen. I think all of the changes make sense. Not too much of the real story is lost. And Molly herself is the one telling the vast majority of her own story. As I said before, the poker is explained extremely well in this book. I wouldn't even say you need to know anything about poker going into this movie. It's that well explained, which is a huge selling point. It's all explained in a way that makes you want to sit up and pay attention. Even being a bookish person, I actually watched the movie before I read the book. I saw the movie, I thought it was so smart and so satisfying and it inspired me to go back and pick up the book, which is, in all honesty, probably not something I would have felt compelled to pick up if I hadn't loved the movie. But now that I have read it, I'm really glad I did so. It definitely added an extra dimension to the story. I think if you liked the book or the movie, if you've only experienced one, it's definitely worth your time to go back and experience the other. Because the movie more or less picks up where the book left off, it does feel like a fictionalized continuation of the book. So if you read the book first, you can look forward to that. But if you do it in the reverse order, as I did, it is a little bit like a detective job to go through the book and figure out what from the movie was real. Often in these types of videos, I will recommend which one I think makes the best entry point. But in this case, I don't think there is one good place to start. I think start with whichever one you're most interested in. And if you're still interested, go back and try the other. So those were my thoughts on the memoir Molly's Game and its movie adaptation. If you've read this book, seen this movie, done both, or are interested in either, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. But if you would prefer to connect with me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!